I may not remember everything, but I'll remember your box. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I am Raphael and I am here to review episode 16 of the Stripper Housewives of Potomac. So we start the episode off with Robin heading into a bridal shop. <laughs> I know, I know, I don't believe it either, but we're gonna pretend that Robin walked into a costume store instead to look for a wedding dress for her Halloween costume this year. I believe she's going as La Llorona, so that explains it. Even the store owner, she was looking at her like, I know that's not Robin Dixon. Is that you, Robin? Robin, I watched season one through season six of The Real Housewives of Potomac, and I know that you're not in here because you're gonna marry Juan. <laughs> But that doesn't stop Robin because she is still there for her non-traditional appointment to try on some non-traditional wedding dresses for this non-traditional wedding that she might not non-traditionally have. Non-traditionally. <laughs> And she goes on to say in her confessional, oh, I'm so stressed, I'm so stressed, you know, it's just so much going on, I have to prepare so many things. And I'm like, last time I checked, let me count, it's gonna be you and the groom, allegedly, if Juan shows up, right? <laughs> it's gonna be you, him, and your two kids. That's four people. And maybe a priest or whoever's gonna marry both of you together. And maybe like the ghosts and spirits, a couple of birds flying over you. And who else is gonna be there that you're so stressed about? It's just you two, so there's not really much to do. But okay, Robin. Ashley's about to try on some dresses. Ashley and Giselle show up. So Robin, she disappears in the back. Ashley and Giselle, they sit down to talk about that last night in Mexico and what really went down between Wendy and Mia. And Ashley, I am convinced that Bravo probably pays her more or gives her a bonus if she manages to spill every everybody's gossip in underneath 30 seconds because that's exactly what she did. She got there and right away she tells Giselle. So Giselle, I mean, that last night in Mexico, you know, me, Mia, Wendy, and Candace, we went out and then... Uh, it, it was pretty intense. I mean, something went down, you know what I'm saying? So Giselle, you know Giselle was just like, wait a minute, are you trying to tell me somebody else's business that doesn't involve me, but I'm gonna involve myself anyway and I'm gonna spread it throughout the group? Are you trying to tell me that, Ashley? Ashley was just like, um, well, all I can really say right now is that two people in this group, something happened between them. So Giselle was just like, wait a minute, did you and Candace kiss? And I'm like, wait a minute, Giselle, what kind of fantasies are you thinking of? Because nobody said that anybody kissed in this group. <laughs> Where did that come from? So Ashley, she was just like, let's just say that something happened between Wendy and Mia and Mia just so happened to have liked Wendy's physique and they just so happened to have left together that same night. So Giselle was just like, wait a minute. So are you trying to tell me that Mia liked her vagina? <laughs> I'm like, Giselle, why are you saying the word vagina as if she just discovered what that word was two days ago? She was just like, so Ashley, wait a minute. Did she like her vagina? <laughs> Ashley, she was just like, well, I mean, I think that she kind of did. And Wendy, I mean, she was kind of intrigued about the whole idea. And then boom, Robin, she came out and she's wearing this wedding dress. And I'm like, aw, aw. In the infamous words of New York, she looks like a fairy princess that resides over the pits of hell. <laughs> But she comes out and she looks cute in the dress and everything. Now, the big red flag was when Giselle and Ashley started going crazy over the dress. Specifically, Giselle. Giselle was telling Robin, Robin, you look so beautiful. I love the dress. I love the dress. Now, if Giselle is telling you that she loves your outfit or your dress, you need to take it off and put it back on the rack. <laughs> or better yet, take it a step further and burn it. <laughs> no, she looks cute in the dress. The dress, it looks cute. You know, gowns, beautiful gowns. <laughs> But she's trying it on. So Ashley, Ashley was just like, okay, well, that's it right there. I got my check for today. Um, I'm leaving. So Robin, good luck with this fake ass wedding. I mean, good luck with this real wedding. Mm -hmm. I love you. I gotta go. Bye, Giselle. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to spread everything that I just told you to the group, okay? And I'm just gonna sit back and watch the fireworks. Bye. Mm -hmm. I, I'll see you, okay? I need to take care of baby Dean. And I need to go find out if Michael's cheating on me for the hundredth time. Goodbye. <laughs> And then she walked away. I'm like, Ashley, Ashley, Ashley. See, Ashley is the definition of doing the bare minimum at a job. <laughs> but I'm not upset with her. Giselle, she's telling her about this bachelorette party that they're planning, and she tells Robin, so Robin, who do you not want at this bachelorette party? Obviously, the the, the word, um, the answer is Karen. You know, that's obvious. But then she throws a curveball, and she says, oh, well, I don't really want Wendy uh, there either because she was laughing at everything that Karen was saying to me in Mexico. And I mean... I mean, I understand it though, because you know, even though her and Wendy did make up a couple of episodes ago, if Wendy truly had made up with Robin, she wouldn't have laughed and she would have just kept it, you know, cordial and, and neutral and would have just kept eating and mind her business. But I mean, if the shit is funny, it's funny. <laughs> 
And I'm pretty sure that wasn't Candace laughing. I'm pretty sure that everybody was laughing at the table, uh, Robin. So, and if anything, you're, you're a bigger hypocrite because were you not the same one? I feel like I have to repeat this every other review. Were you not the same one recording her and Mia fighting in, um, in Miami and you were laughing at the table with your phone in Wendy's face? So, again, it's just so hypocritical what she's doing. Like, I get it now, but very hypocritical. So... I was listening to Robin and Giselle's podcast, Reasonably Delusional, and around the 46th, 47th mark, Robin, she actually mentions and talks about this mystery woman that Juan was with behind her back that Karen brought up last week on last week's episode, and come to find out, she confirms it, that it is all true. She knew about this woman, that this whole affair thing happened at the very start of the pandemic, and Juan, her excuse was, oh, well, you know, Juan, he was just bored, and I'm like... So just because he's bored, it's okay for him to go off with another woman behind your back, Robin? Like, what? So she goes on to say that, you know, there's so much more to the whole story and everything. And that she was prepared for it. And that going into season seven, she knew that somebody was going to bring it up. Because she knew that somebody knew about it. But nobody brought it up until Karen brought it up last week. But that's what I'm confused about. If you were so ready for it, you know, you were preparing yourself for it. Why, when Karen brought it up and they were talking about it with you, you were pretending like, uh, what are you talking about? No, Juan doesn't have another woman. When you said yourself on this podcast that you were ready for it. So which one is it, Robin? Were you not ready for it? Do you believe it? Do you not believe it? Were you trying to lie your way out of it? But she said that her and Juan talked it out. And that's the reason, that's the reason why this whole wedding has been delayed. Yeah, that's the reason, Robin. That's the reason. <laughs> And, you know, that's why it has been so prolonged for so long because they were going through that. And she said, I think that's basically that's all she said. She said that the rest of the information that she's going to save for Patreon. <laughs> and I am not going to pay anybody's Patreon to hear about Juan cheating on Robin. Like, no. But if any of you have extra dollars, go subscribe to her Patreon and then come back and tell me. <laughs> I want to know. I'm nosy. <laughs> Then we see Karen and Wendy meeting up for lunch. At the same time, we see Candace and her husband, Chris, meeting up on their back porch to eat a snack. She's filling him in on everything that happened in Mexico. She's telling him how these old ladies, I'm assuming that she was talking about Sleepy Sharice and Karen, were fighting and how Karen supposedly knows about this mystery woman that Juan was with behind Robin's back. Chris, he summed up this entire season perfectly by telling Candace, oh, so everybody's just talking about another husband cheating? Hmm. How groundbreaking. And I believe that he heard the podcast with Robin that I was just talking about a second ago because they had tweeted, oh, it's so funny that they've been spreading lies all this entire season about people who were innocent. I'm assuming that he's talking about himself and Eddie. But now that the truth is out there about Juan's mistress and about their relationship, now Robin, she wants to charge on Patreon for you to find out the truth instead of putting it on the show, which I do agree with Chris because it's so hilarious. Like Giselle, especially Giselle. Giselle, you go after everybody's marriage. And I'm pretty sure that Robin had told you this before you started filming season seven about what was going on in her marriage with Juan. And yet you never brought this up. You never dug into her relationship or her marriage, or you never questioned her on camera the way you do everybody else, especially Candace this specific season with Chris. But now all of a sudden you have to charge on Patreon. Like... Again, it's just such a joke. So I do give him, you know, points for that. I wonder what's going to come about that. I mean, will Robin come back for season eight? Do y'all see that happening? I, I don't know. It's just, it's a lot going on right now with Robin and Juan. And it's just very interesting because what? It only took, what, seven years? <laughs> Get back to Wendy and Karen. Karen, she's going on to Wendy about, you know, this everything that happened in Mexico. And she's telling Wendy, um, so Wendy, I just can't believe that Robin will put it out there that I was in Las Vegas with some guy with blue eyes. Like, how dare she? I love Ray. I love Ray. Ray is the man of my dreams. Do you think that that was me in the picture, Wendy? Wendy, you know Wendy wanted to say yes. <laughs> Wendy was just like, uh, yeah, that was you in the picture. I mean, um... Uh, oh wait, no! I still needed somebody to film with for season eight. Um, no, I, I, I don't, I don't remember. I, she didn't pass me the phone. <laughs> so then, all of a sudden, Ashley, she just so happened to call while they were filming and having lunch. Mm -hmm. So Ashley, of course, she's just there to collect her Bravo check for 30 seconds and then she's out. She tells uh, uh Karen, so you know, we got a bachelorette party for Robin. And we got an invitation and a text message or whatever. But you or Wendy's name were not in the invitation. I wonder why. Hmm. I wonder why, Ashley. So, Ashley, she hangs up and she was just like, okay, I did my duty. Goodbye. <laughs> So Karen, she tells Wendy, um, I'm not understanding why she invite, she did not invite me or you. I don't get it. I mean, honestly, if she's upset with the truth, she needs to face the truth in her relationship and her marriage with Juan Dixon, not with me. She is projecting her issues onto me. And I'm like, Karen, uh, stop. <laughs> 
You are full of S-H-I-T. <laughs> Why are you so shocked, Karen, that you didn't get an invitation from Robin? You've been telling her that her wedding, her marriage, her relationship to Juan is all fake. And granted, it is. <laughs> but still, you've been telling that to her every single second that you could. And now, all of a sudden, you want an invitation to her bachelorette party? I mean... I just, I don't really know what she expected. If anything, I could understand why Wendy would feel some type of way. Even though, like I said earlier, I could see why Robin wouldn't have invited her. Because if I was in, on Mexico with my group of friends and somebody's coming at me and I see you laughing at their jokes, oh yeah, the friendship is over. <laughs> Even though me and you were good a couple of episodes before that, yeah, no, once I see you laughing at me like that, yeah, no, it's it's not a good look. I just feel like if you're going to disinvite Wendy, at least disinvite her for the real reasons why you don't want her there. Because you don't like her. Because genuinely, you haven't moved on from the issue in Miami and from last season, from her embarrassing you, and you still hold some type of grudge to her. Don't try to say, oh, yeah, we moved on, and she was laughing at Karen's jokes in Miami and in Mexico, blah, 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 and now I'm holding it against her, so now she's not coming, because I'm pretty sure I have to rewind the footage i'm pretty sure that candace mia jacqueline even sleepy sharice the producers a cameraman the tourists i mean i'm pretty sure a couple of them were laughing at karen's jokes towards you and juan <laughs> So how come they still got invited to your bachelorette party, Robin? Then we see Giselle heading over to Mia's house for the first time to talk about this bachelorette party and to get everything together. Mia, she's showing her around the house. Eventually they sit down and Giselle's real motive and intentions come out. And she was just like, so Mia, you know, I want to talk to you about that last night in Mexico. Mia, she quickly got up like, um, what are you talking about? Like in Mexico? Like, yeah, Mexico was so cute, but what are you talking about, Giselle? Giselle goes on to say, well, you know, I actually heard something from Ashley. And then Giselle, she was actually up front for the first time. And instead of, you know, beating around the bush, she was just like, you know what? I made up rumors about you and Wendy having sex together. <laughs> I'm like, wow, Giselle, this is the first time you've been honest in seven years, but kudos to you. Mia, she goes on to say, um, wait a minute, uh, you're saying that me and Wendy had sex? Um, no, like, that totally didn't happen, like, between me and her, what are you talking about, Giselle? <laughs> So Giselle was just like, well, you know, Ashley, she told me that, you know, supposedly Wendy or you kind of spread your legs to each other. Is that true? And I'm like, Giselle, you know, relax, Inspector Gadget. <laughs> so went Mia, she goes on to explain. And she tells Giselle, um, well, you know, that last night in Mexico, me and Wendy, we were kind of drunk and everything. And, you know, Wendy, she kind of, boop, you know, she kind of, boop. <laughs> And then she basically alluded that Wendy, you know, she spread out and then she spread her legs for, for Mia to see, you know, her, her, you know, her woo and everything. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is interesting. <laughs> so then Mia, so then Giselle was just like, wait, so did anything happen? Did you show her yours? And I'm like, oh, Giselle, you're so curious. <laughs> so Mia, she continues and she was just like, um... Well, I mean, yeah, she kind of saw it or whatever. I mean, she kind of saw it, but she only saw a little bit, you know, because we can't really do anything unless G, my husband, and Eddie, her husband, unless they kind of consent with everything, and then they could touch it. But, I mean, she kind of touched it a little bit, and then in the confessional, the producer, now the producer was all curious, and she was just like, wait, so Mia, did Wendy touch your you-know-what? And I'm like, ooh, producer, this is not professional at all. <laughs> How are you asking these type of questions? But Mia, she goes on to answer. And she was just like, um, I mean, she kind of touched it a little bit. And then she motioned like this. When she did that, my buzzy jumped. I'm like, oh, wait a minute, Mia. <laughs> but if Wendy was okay with it and Mia was okay with it, then so be it. But for Mia to put it all on Wendy and say, oh, maybe that's why she was coming at me the way she was in Miami. Because of that built up frustration. Eh. I'm pretty sure that it was the other way around, Mia, okay? So then she also tells Giselle, oh, so Jacqueline, she also called me right after Mexico wanting to film something because she has nobody to film with and she wants to come back for season eight. Um, I told her, mm, no. <laughs> She still needs a couple of more days to see where she wants to go with that relationship. And then she tells Giselle, so I actually brought a couple of things for Robin's bachelorette party. So she goes to get them. She comes back and there's a bunch of straws, right? So there's one bag full of penis straws where there's a bunch of different colors and the tips are like penises. <laughs> And then the other one, they're gold straws with like this silhouette of a man, like a muscular man. And then she goes on to tell Giselle, um, these are Juan Dixon. This is Juan Dixon on the straw. And I'm like... I was looking at those straws. I'm like, that is not Juan Dixon. He is not that muscular. <laughs> and he doesn't come with a cell phone to call Robin and curse her out. So I'm pretty sure that that's not Juan. <laughs> but it was cute, though. It was a cute little thing. She gives them to Giselle. Giselle, she opens up the penis ones. Hmm. 
And then she takes one out. And I'm like, okay, what is she doing? She takes the white one out. Mia, she goes on to say, um, of course, you're going to get the white penis. I knew you always liked the white penis. And then Giselle, she proceeds to drink out of her cup with the penis straw. But she does it like this, though. Like, And I'm like, Giselle, what kind of sucking dick skills is that? Like, no. <laughs> if that was me, I would have been like... <laughs> We briefly see Wendy at her house getting ready to commentate on the Roe versus Wade decision and what the negative aspect of that is, which I still cannot believe something like that happened. It's such a shame, honestly. But she goes on to say in her confessional, I'm so confused as to why Robin has an issue with me all of a sudden. I thought we were good. And honestly, Wendy, at this point, you really need to stop just begging for Robin or Giselle's friendship at this point and just let them go. You know, if they don't want to be friends with you, then it's okay. You don't have to be on their good side. It's unfortunate that they're trying to ice you out this way by not filming with you. But at this point, Wendy, Wendy, I'd rather you not film at all with Robin or Giselle because it's never going to be genuine coming from them towards you. But we get this bachelorette party on the go. So we head back over to Mia's house. Giselle, she's the first one to show up. And Giselle, you know, Giselle actually looks really pretty in this dress. I'm like, wow, Giselle, you look really, really nice. She does look like a Barbie. Husband not included. <laughs> And she has her own Barbie dream house. You know, those three blocks that she kind of put together to make a house. So she fits the theme. So she's there with Mia. Mia, she's the, she introduces her to Carly, which is Robin's assistant. And I believe she was there with one of her cousins or one of her friends. Then we see the big party bus. It pulls up and the party bus is huge and it has a stripper pole inside. Then we see Candace. Candace arrives and she's also wearing a nice outfit. I believe it's like a black latex outfit, but she looks really pretty. So she gets on the bus. Then we see Ashley. Ashley shows up, comes to find out that her and Mia are wearing the same thing, a snakeskin bodysuit. And I'm like, well, 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 look at that. The two biggest snakes on the show. I was waiting for Robin and Giselle to pull up with their own snake outfit. <laughs> See, that's why I decided to wear this specific shirt for this specific review. You know, I'm wearing my leper, not leper, but my leper. <laughs> so then I believe we have the, 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 oh, yeah, I forgot to mention. You know, everybody's getting on the bus. Everybody's looking all sexy and everything. We're about to have a good time. And then we pan over to Sleepy Sharice. <laughs> she was struggling to get out the truck. And I'm like, why is she here? <laughs> She's getting out like, hold on, guys. Give me one second. Hold on. Is this just a stripper? Is this the stripper party boss? Can, can I get on? Can somebody help me get on, please? Uh, oh, oh, my back. Oh, hold on, my legs. <laughs> I'm like, why is Cherise on here? It just throws off the whole entire vibe. So then, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, what's her name? Robin. She shows up. She was wearing this green dress. And I mean, the green dress, it was, it was a green dress. <laughs> But she shows up, they're all throwing money around. Sharice, you know, everybody's having a good time. And again, Sharice wants to throw off the whole vibe in her confessional. She goes on to say, you know, I just, I don't really like how, you know, I, I think I was supposed to be the one to throw this bachelorette party. <sighs> um, I was supposed to throw this whole bachelorette party for Robin, but I guess since Giselle's the best friend, I, I mean, I was pretty in my feelings. And I'm like, Cherise, go, go away. <laughs> we then see Karen heading over to a business meeting with her husband, Ray. She's there to talk about her new four-wig candle that's limited edition for certain holidays. So she's there meeting up with her business partner. She's telling him, um, I'm very excited for my new venture. You know, it was fun selling three-wig candles, but I'm so excited to be selling four-wig candles. I love it. I love it, Ray. Don't you love it too, Ray? I love it. And you know what? I'd much rather be here selling my candle and my business than being over there in some raggedy bachelorette party bus with raggedy Robin and raggedy Giselle. I'd rather be here making money. And all this time while she's doing this, that, and the third in her confessional, she keeps being shady towards, you know, the bachelorette party. And I'm like, Karen, it smells like you're upset and jealous that you're not on the party bus with the rest of the cast having a good time because it did look like a fun time from what we were seeing. So she goes on to tell her business partner, well, guess what? I'm ready to drop $10,000 right now for my deal right now for my four-wick candle. I'm ready right now. Whenever you're ready, I'm ready to sign the contract. And I looked at her website to see how much this four-wick candle that she's talking about costs. It costs $130 damn dollars for this four-wick candle. Like, Karen, you have lost your LaDa mind. <laughs> $130. It better do more than just burn and smell around the house. Like, it better text me every morning saying, good morning, beautiful. I love you. It better send me flowers every single day for $130. It better take me out to lunch. 
So then we head back over to the party bus and we see Mia. She's holding on to the bus. She has her you know what in Robin's face and she's giving her a nasty lap dance. <laughs> All we needed was a song playing in the background. I just want to touch you, caress you, touch you, kiss you, baby, tell you how I missed you. I want to make you come. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Janet was something else with that song. But regardless, they eventually, they sit down and calm down. Candace, she asks Mia. So Mia, wait, typically when the dancer goes on stage, do they wipe down the pole or how does it go? And of course, did y'all hear what Ashley said to Candace? I feel like she was trying to instigate a fight. She asked Candace, oh, I'm pretty sure that you touch worse. And I'm like, that's coming from you? Somebody who had to touch Michael Darby? Cut it out, Ashley. Stop. That, it's just too easy. <laughs> So then Mia, she goes on to tell us more about this last night in Mexico. And she tells everybody, um, well, I mean, there was much more than the, you know, just between me and Wendy. Like, me, Wendy, Candace, and Ashley, like, we all kissed each other. We had, like, a four-way kiss. And I'm like, <gasps> Candace, she didn't deny this, you know, because typically we'll hear her in the confessional, like, no, I never said this. I never did that. But, I mean, obviously there must have been some truth to it. And I just want to know, I just want to know. Where are the cameras? Where's the footage to this? I mean, we always talk about, oh, so-and-so happened. So-and-so did this. Kathy Hilton, she had a meltdown. She did this, that, and the third. But we never get any footage. And we didn't get any footage of the last night in Mexico. Hmm. So they finally get to the strip club and they take their seat at the booth. The waitress, she comes on over and she tells them, oh, by the way, tonight we're serving steak and lobster. And I did not know that was an actual thing. I thought it was just the urban legend that Mia just put out there just to put out there. Because back in my day... Back in my day, we only had chicken wings and french fries with a side of titties, and that was that. So obviously, all of this is news to me. But speaking of titties, Giselle, she orders everybody shots. They're all taking tequila shots. She gives everybody $5 in singles to throw at the dancers, at the strippers. The dancers are dancing. The strippers are stripping. I was two seconds away from throwing $5 bills at the screen. That's how fun it looked. <laughs> And this also triggered me because I remember years ago, years ago, I also wanted to be a stripper slash dancer slash go-go dancer at some point because I love the art form of pole dance. I just love looking at it. I love going upside down on it. I love seeing people spin on it. It's just so beautiful to me. I'll post a little video of me here upside down on a pole. But they all started having fun and Giselle... Giselle, when I tell you all, if I thought last week's episode was hilarious, this scene right here with Giselle and the stripper... It almost took me out <laughs> because one of the dancers, she's dancing, right? And I believe she has her back against Giselle. Giselle, she's picking up her money and she's waiting to for the dancer to turn around. Giselle, she was just like, um, uh, okay, uh, um, so how do I do this? <laughs> and then the second that the stripper turns around, Giselle was just like, hi. <laughs> It was so, so, so hilarious. Like, Giselle, how can Giselle be so messy but just so funny at the same time? <laughs> it was just so funny the way she said it. Hi. Like, so uncomfortably awkward. <laughs> so she's doing all that. They're throwing the money around. Again, they're all having fun. And then there's Sharice. So they're all continuing having fun. So eventually, they all sit back down. They start eating their steak and lobster to this fancy music in the background. <laughs> these violins and pianos and I believe this is where things got messy and uh, it was just a messy for no reason because everybody was having a good time and I believe they started talking about Michael Darby and I'm like Ugh, what a way to get turned off so quickly at a strip club <laughs> to talk about that zombie they start asking Ashley so Ashley how do you how what's going on with you and Michael are you are you two divorcing like what's going on Ashley she said everything but no she said um I mean, you know, sometimes we're good and, um, you know, sometimes we're not. And, um, yeah, but, um, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, what? <laughs> she goes on to say, you know, me and him, we're at a good place now. You know, I was dating at first, kind of. But then I said no because he told me that he wasn't dating. So then I felt bad. And I'm like, you believed anything that was coming out of his mouth? And then Candace, Candace was like, oh, well, actually, Michael, he was at my husband's restaurant not too long ago with another woman. So Ash, I don't know why Candace would put herself in that position, too, because last time Candace did, Ashley did that to her, it started a whole argument. So I'm not really sure why she would even say that. If I was Candace, I would have just stayed quiet and just mind my business and let her be her with that zombie and that stuff. So Ashley was just like, wait, what? What are you talking about? Like, what do you mean? And I'm like, Ashley, why are you acting surprised? <laughs> Like, we all saw this coming, and again, like I said, I just, I have a feeling at the reunion when Andy goes, oh, so Ashley, are you actually going to divorce Michael? What is Ashley going to say? 
You know, I feel like maybe we should work things out for the kids. I'm telling you, that's gonna be her answer and that's that. I just don't think that she's actually gonna be single, but regardless, they go back out to the dance floor to throw money at the dancers. Robin, she was with one dancer who was bent over in front of her, shaking her ass. Candace, she notices this and she was just like, wait a minute, is she whispering sweet nothings in her ear? <laughs> Because then we look over at Robin and Robin, she is so close to her. I saw more romance between Robin and this stripper than Robin and Juan <laughs> in all seven seasons because she was very close to her. She was whispering to her. I was kind of turned on. I'm like, ooh, okay, zaddy Robin. <laughs> I'm like, what is happening with this stripper episode? But... You know, she was having a fun, she was having a good time and everything. And I'm like, Ugh, I just really wish that Karen and Wendy were, you know, well, I wish that they were actually on good terms with Karen and Wendy because I wanted to see everybody having fun at the strip, at the strip club. Like it was such a fun, beautiful scene to see them all having fun for once. And then, you know, Sharice. Again, she just ruined the whole entire vibe because as they're eating, they sit back down to eat and everything. Well, first of all, it was Robin and Giselle that kind of started this whole thing asking about Karen. And I'm like, you two do not like Karen and Wendy at this moment. And you're asking about them. Why? This is supposed to, this is supposed to be your huge celebration, Robin. Yet you want to talk about Karen. She asked Sharice, Sharice, so where do you stand with Karen nowadays? Sharice, Sharice, I'm not sure what was going on with Sharice because Sharice... I don't know, maybe she took like too many tequila shots because she started off by saying, you know, well, I'm not Karen, did you say Karen? Well, you know what? Last time I was in a club with Karen Huger, that fucking bitch, the last time I was in a club with her, well, you know, she, she always gets drunk all the time and oh, she always gets drunk and, you know, last time when we were at the club, she... She left me to go fuck somebody, uh, to go fuck one of the club workers. And I'm like, what? What? Karen? Karen? I mean, allegedly, you know, she was fucking somebody at the, at the club who works there. And I'm like, Karen, you know, a club worker? A club worker? That's lower than security guard. At least security guard could get you backstage. <laughs> But I'm just like, wow, Sharice, again, Sharice just fell for that because obviously I'm assuming that she's drunk or I'm not sure what's going on, but she, now she's putting it out there that Karen is just sleeping around at nightclubs. And do I believe that? I can't see Karen getting down like that. I mean, I could picture her having like a side piece besides Ray, but I just don't picture her actually doing that at a nightclub. I can't even picture Karen at a nightclub. <laughs> but regardless that was that and then i believe uh ashley she started going on saying oh wait a minute so are you talking about the blue-eyed guy because supposedly karen she has herself a driver who has blue eyes and i'm like okay this whole plot continues mia she made a good point that i actually maybe agree with because in her confessional she goes on to say um well you know at a certain age you know certain men they can't please their women anymore so they have like this kind of contract this kind of like decision that you know you could go out and do whatever as long as i know who the person is and I kind of feel like that's what they have. I feel like that's what Karen and Ray have. I feel like if Karen actually does have somebody on the side, Ray, he probably already knows about this. It's just, I wish that Karen was just more honest about it and just put it out there the same way that Mia does. But... I guess Karen, she wants to be like this grand dame, this holier than thou image. So obviously she puts that out there. People, she probably thinks that people are gonna look at her sideways when nobody's gonna look at you sideways. Cherise, she continued on by saying, yeah, you know, Karen, she will fuck any dick. She will fuck any dick that comes her own way. You know, that fucking horn, fucking Karen Huger. <laughs> I'm like, somebody please give her a, like a warm blanket <laughs> and, and a towel. <laughs> Just a mess. But regardless, they leave Sharice there. That was that. They get back on stage. Mia and Ashley, the Snake Sisters, they're on stage dancing and everything. Robin, she gets on stage. And they all just continue having a good time. You know, Sharice, it's just, Sharice was the only one that kind of threw off the vibe, but... That was that, y'all. It was a really, really fun episode. I think that this is the second best episode after the last one because, again, it was just a fun vibe. It was fun. It was a fun time. But next week is the finale, and then we're slowly easing our way into the reunion. I think Ashley and Candace, I think that friendship is over because she was just on Watch What Happens Live, and she said that at the reunion, after the reunion, there is no type of friendship with Ashley moving forward in the future, so I wonder what that's about. Let me know what you all thought about this episode down in the comments. Bye, everybody. Bye, my strippers. Mwah.